Hello, everyone, and welcome to AEW Dark. I am Excalibur, joined by the human suplex machine the test. The following contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. And introducing first from Ehime, Japan, weighing 175 pounds, Hagane Shino. So, Taz, you know, usually we get a countdown when Dosh is about to talk, so we're not talking over each other. But Dosh just went into business for herself. Well, Dosh is a rebel, uh, and that's how everybody knows she's, she's a rebel type of woman. But this should be interesting matchup here, my friend. Look who's coming out. And his opponent. From Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, playing 224 pounds, Kenny Omega! Yeah, big reaction for Kenny Omega here at AEW Universal. Omega set to compete in his first singles match since November of last year. That match where he was defeated by Hangman Adam Page for the AEW World Championship. But Taz, as of late, Kenny Omega and the Elite embroiled in the best of seven series with Death Triangle for the AEW World Trios Championship. Oh, and it's been absolutely amazing battles for sure for those Trios titles. But right now, it's about Kenny Omega with an extremely rare appearance here on Dark in Orlando. This is awesome. Yeah, this is Kenny Omega's first appearance on AEW Dark since January of 2020. Very nearly two years. He competed on Elevation uh, a, a, few, a few months ago. But yeah, back on Dark for the first time in nearly two years. Going one on one with Higane Shino to kick us off here tonight. I said rare, that might have been an understatement. <laughs> but, <laughs> but here we go. Shino and Omega, let's do it. Hold on a minute. Kenny getting a, a chance started for his opponent. Very, very unorthodox. Well, sometimes that could be quite of a head game, or it's all maybe it's Kenny showing respect towards his opponent. Nice go behind right there by Omega. Yeah, look at that. Hagane is a, uh, a veteran of the Japanese independent wrestling scene. He is uh, he's competed in a number of promotions, DDT, uh, in Kaintai Dojo. That's actually where he began his career. Also in Big Japan Pro Wrestling, and Kenny Omega, no stranger to the competitors in DDT, having spent a very large portion of his career in Japan over there. Nice shoulder tackle by Omega, taking Shino down. Well, Omega has the size advantage on Shino, but Shino's got some speed. You could tell already. Oh, wow, look at that by Kenny Omega. Showing no respect. I thought he respected the man. Maybe not. Trying to get under his skin, and Omega with the you know singles match here tonight. Trio's match tomorrow night on Dynamite. The Elite down three matches to one Death Triangle with a chance to close the series out tomorrow night on Dynamite. And it's a no disqualification match, Taz. No disqualification. It's going to be insane, dude. Cannot wait until we get to San Antonio tomorrow night for that battle. Match five. Yeah, it, it is win or go home for the Elite. A must win matchup in the best of seven series to determine the AEW World Trios champions. Well, the pressure's, def the pressure's definitely going to be on the elite for sure. Right now, the pressure, pressure is on Kenny's opponent. Well, maybe not. Look at that. Yeah. H Hagane out of the corner, ducks under the lariat attempt by Kenny Omega. And then the kick to the shoulder. You see that shoulder taped up. Omega, when he went for the lariat, he immediately started grabbing for that right shoulder. And Hagane looking to seize on that, but that also could be uh, could be very dangerous headed into tomorrow night. We saw all three members of the Elite very banged up after last week's matchup, Taz. Oh, yeah. I mean, Nick Jackson uh, had to leave the match, then come back with an ankle issue. Look at Hagane here, though. You know, maybe this was a bad idea by Kenny Omega being in this matchup here right before match five tomorrow night on Dynamite. Oh, oh. Omega was looking for the one-winged angel on the floor, but Hagane once again targeting that shoulder of Omega, and Hagane oh, went for a diving hook on Rana, but instead Omega, the powerbomb on the apron. Well placed, you know, for the man doing that move, in this case Omega, you're blind, you can't see, your, your opponent's in your face. Man, he placed him hard right on that apron. You, that was perfect, perfect placement to drive your opponent's spine into the apron. 
Yeah, I mean, the, the term ring awareness is used quite often. And, and that really, I mean, the, the easiest way to think about it is a, a wrestler like Omega always knows how many steps away from the ropes he is, how many steps away from the turnbuckles he is as he power bombs Pagani into the ropes, pops him up the sky high from Omega. One, two, and oh, Pagani kicking out at 2.99. Pagani showing a lot of heart right there in that kick out, man. Most athletes would have been stayed down, been down, because there's a lot of pain involved with that. And you can see Hagani, man, he's laying on that apron. He is in bad shape, but he kicked out, man. I, I respect this guy. And Omega sending Hagane to the floor. Kenny, he can't allow himself to get flustered. I mean, we, we know what a great wrestler he is, but, you know, frustration even gets the best of us, Taz. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You, you got to be careful. You can't get too cocky, can't get too ahead of yourself, can't look past an opponent. Look what just happened last week on Dynamite with Chris Jericho and Andretti. I mean, that, that, that right there tells you. Yeah, Action and Andretti picking up a, a massive win, defeating Chris Jericho last Wednesday night on Dynamite. Action and Andretti will be in action later on here tonight on AEW Dark. But right now, Omega, and I think this is the frustration of Omega showing as he is just battering Hagane on the outside. Hey, he's been attacking that back, middle of the back, lower back throughout this contest, just about Kenny has. Man, Hagane is hurting big time. We talked about Dynamite tomorrow night. Not only is it match five in the best of seven series between Death Triangle and the Elite, we will hear from the American Dragon, Brian Danielson. He chased MJF out of Dallas last week. We'll also have the next chapter in the book of Powerhouse Hobbs. The AEW Women's World Championship is on the line when Jamie Hayter looks to make her first defense of the title against former champion Hikaru Shida. We will also hear from absolute Ricky Starks, plus FTR and the guns. Colton and Austin will finally collide in tag team action. Plus, speaking of tag teams, former AEW World Tag Team Champions Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland will be face to face tomorrow night at Dynamite, live from the Freeman Coliseum in San Antonio. Right now, Omega has been in complete control. hagani has got to try to do something, move, counter, something to get something offensively going. That's not going to do it, Hagani. Got to kick out again here. One, two. Omega dropped the elbow. Hagani Shino able to kick out, but he seems to be fading against Omega, but you can see the frustration on the face of Omega. He's clenching those teeth. He is, he's, fr he's frustrated. You hear him yelling. He's yelling at Hagani. He's pissed. He wants him to just stay down. Now he's just disrespecting him, saying, hit me in the abs, go ahead. Slapping him, punking him out. And wow, Kenny just teeing off on Hagane. Hagane, those open hand shots to the midsection. Oh, we've seen Hagane pull off a win here before in AEW on Dark Elevation. He defeated Nick Camarado, a much larger competitor. Hagane, very effective at using his size and leverage, but right now Omega seems to be dominating Hagane, but just as I say that, Hagane fired back with an elbow. Yeah, it's tough to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone like Kenny Omega. He's so battle-tested, so much big match, main event experience. But Agani, again, showing a lot of fire. Now, Agani, well, I, I was about to say gaining the upper hand on Omega, but Omega rocked him with those shots, and now just that right hook coming in across the jaw, and Hagane. Three of them, three of them, three. You're not Osprey. You're not Osprey. <laughs> You're not Osprey. You're not Osprey. <laughs> And you're not Will Ospreay, basically. Oh, Damn. <laughs> oh, wait, but Hagane up to his feet. Maybe going to lose an upper body striking battle, but Hagane putting those kicks to good use. Omega intercepted that one. Oh, Hagane came around the corner. The back heel kick. Quick feet right there. Oof. Flying back elbow by Kenny Omega. Omega launched in the back elbow, but Hagane countered. He countered Omega into a DDT. And Omega is rocked. Yeah, Omega's feeling that hard impact on the head. Uh, Hagane Shino, the Asahi moonsault, takes out Omega on the floor. But you can see Hagane from all that punishment he's taken, slow to capitalize. Yeah, he's trying to regroup, but he's, again, like I said earlier, he had to try to start mounting some offense. He's definitely doing that, and it's impressive. Hagane Shino returns Kenny Omega to the ring. And now Omega getting his bearings as Hagane 
Perched on the top, missile drop kick. Omega covered two. Kicking out. Well, that would have been a massive upset right there if that would have went the way of Omega losing. And that's what I was just thinking. You, you mentioned Chris Jericho losing to Action Andretti last Wednesday night. Imagine if Hagane Shino, I mean, that was upset of the decade. This might be upset of the century if Shino is able to pull this off here tonight in Orlando. Well, let's see. Right now, Kenny's turned the tables again towards his side. What has he got in mind here, Kenny Omega? Typically, when an opponent places, uh, or when, when you place an opponent's legs over the top rope, it's indicative of a superplex, maybe even an avalanche brain buster, but Hagane knows that as well as anybody. He's hanging onto the ropes, trying to prevent Omega from bringing him down the hard way, but Omega, those chops to the shoulder blades. Yeah, right up a shoulder blade, ridge hand-like chops. And now, Shino is trying to bring something here. Hagane up to the top, Omega! Launch that knee strike right down the middle. Uh-oh. And Omega. Got the leg. The legs are crossed. And Hagane goes down. Omega. Slow to cover, though. This is it. He's done. Omega makes the cover. And no, again, Hagane. A razor. Thin, razor close kick out there by Hagane Shino. Hagane, who performs alongside Hikaru Shida in the Makai performing group in Japan, here tonight looking to pull off a career defining upset in Orlando. The V trigger avoided. Hagane oh. lands on his feet. Oh, what a roundhouse kick on target. And Hagane sweeps out the leg into the pin, too, and oh, Omega kicks out. Wow, that was close. Great job there by Hagane. He almost got the win, dude. Yeah, and Omega, you can see, trying to clear the cobwebs. I think Omega stunned that this match has slipped from his grasp. And now Hagane on target with the kicks. He's winding up. And the third, no, intercepted by Omega. Oh, Omega, oh, the Snapdragon. Oh, oh, oh. oh, forget about it. Man, what a landing. Yeah. Omega oh. rears back, throws the right arm lariat, hooks the leg, and no! <laughs> wow. Omega, V trigger, bang! On target, and now Omega not leaving any question, the one winged angel, two and three. Winner of this match, Kenny Omega. Hey, Hagani put up a hell of a fight right there against a legitimate international star, a world class athlete, Kenny Omega. That was impressive by both men. Yet, yeah, as we saw Hagani kick out of some very close pinning predicaments. I think it says a lot that Omega had to resort to, uh, you know, to his absolute top-notch finisher, the move that, that nobody in AEW has been able to survive, the one-winged angel. He had to resort to that to put away Hagane Shino. And you see Kenny showing respect towards his opponent right there. What a match, very impressive. Kenny Omega gets the win going into tomorrow night. All right, here we go, our next matchup right here on AEW Dog, featuring the guy who just had the upset of the year, the century, whatever you want to call it. Action Andretti in action right now. The following contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, weighing 184 pounds, action, and Dreddy! Well, Taz, action and Dreddy, making, uh, making his debut here tonight on AEW Dark in, uh, well, in Universal Studios here, but, you know, I'd like to, I don't like to take credit for a lot of things, Taz, but last week, you and I talked about 
renaming this show AEW Action. And, and what do we have here? What, let's play off. Hard in the ring, Invictus Cash. So wait, we're gonna name it after Action Bronson? I'll tell him, he'll love that. Bronson would love no, that. No, no, last, last week, last week you and I, remember we had a conversation about but renaming this show to AEW Action, and then here we have. I don't, I don't action. remember that. I, 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 you sure that was me and I'm another commentator? There's a lot of commentators here. You sure it was me? Oh, I'm sorry. It was Mark Henry. That's right. There you go. All yeah. right. Oh. Well, action, action Andretti, Invictus Cash, squaring off one on one. Andretti, as we've already mentioned, had that massive upset of Chris Jericho last Wednesday night on AEW Dynamite. Can he keep the momentum going here tonight? Or will Invictus Cash, who we've seen, very accomplished, very technical wrestler, will he be able to get the upper hand on Andretti? Andretti, though, grabs the wrist. Yeah, no, Cash is good right there. And you see he's tenacious on trying to get control. And he keeps getting caught in that two-on-one wrist control by Andretti. So that's a good job by the young man in blue and green. I just want to remind fans in Kansas City, in the Kansas City area, this is our only live event in Kansas City of 2023. We'll be returning to the Cable Dahmer Arena in Independence, Missouri on Wednesday, March 22nd, and we'll be making a return to the New York Tri-State area for the first time in 2023 for the UBS Arena on Long Island Wednesday, April 5th. Tickets available this Friday at 10 a.m. local time, AEWTIX.com and Ticketmaster.com. Taz, they make great holiday gifts. You gotta stick them in a sock. Stick them in your sock. Oh, Andretti, the Tijeras takes down Invictus Cash, and now Andretti off the bottom rope with the Tornillo, one, two. And Cash able to kick out. Good kick out by Cash, and good uh, footwork, speed, quickness by Andretti. He's got to stay on his opponent here. His opponent's got a little bit of a size advantage, but that's not a, it's not bothering Action Andretti. Andretti, the knife edge chops in the corner. Cash getting lit up. Andretti laying in the rapid fire chops in the corner. Victus Cash sent pillar to post. Nope, reverses in a handful of hair. Brings Andretti down to the mat. Invictus Cash, some big right hands, and now Cash, the lateral press, Andretti kicking out at one. Yeah, and, you know, we talked about this uh, this man here, Invictus Cash, He's very talented, been around the block. That action Andretti in a bad spot right here. That's smart that Andretti got his arm out of there because he was the only getting caught with your arm in between your opponent's legs to get on barred that way, believe it or not. Go! Andretti. He went down to his backside with the jawbreaker, getting a little more oomph on that. The shoulder of the midsection vaults off the back of Cash. Comes in with the flying elbow strike and a lariat. Andretti ducks underneath and Victus Cash. The back breaker switches his grip and lands the neck breaker. Action Andretti, great combination offense there. Yeah, he's definitely uh, putting together a lot of offense. I think he's gonna go to the air here. Action Andretti, the tope, he lands on his feet. He returns to the ring and immediately flying out onto Invictus Cash one more time. You hear that, Taz? The fans heard me say one more time and they started chanting it. They did, but cardio wise, that sucks. I wouldn't do it three times. We'd be blown up. <laughs> <laughs> Andre Andretti was looking for the springboard. 450 splash, he lands the thrust kick, and now Andretti running, shooting star press. One, two, three! Winner of this match, action, Andretti! Uh, he nailed that running, shooting star press for sure. Well done. And uh, I tell you what, he's very impressive. Yeah, the wins keep on coming for Action Andretti here in All Elite Wrestling. Singles action coming up next here on AEW Dark featuring The Problem, Marina Shafir. The following contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. 
Introducing first from Moldova, the problem, Marina Shafir. Marina Shafir flying solo here tonight. Typically, we've seen uh, Vicky Guerrero and Nyla Rose in Marina's corner as of late, but remains to be seen. That is going to play a role into this match. Well, I'll tell you this right now, story of my life, riding solo. I believe in that. Whole career, I've rode solo. I believe in riding solo. I want to be around anybody ever. Even me, Tess? And I you know it's hard to do, especially because I've, even you, even because I've won multiple tag team titles, I did a solo. Won all those belts by myself. Yep, that's right. Uh, uh, the, the only man to ever hold a tag team championship by yourself multiple times in a career. That's right. Kinda. Well, collar and elbow tie up here to kick things off. Marina wrenches and Helica risk to the mat. And now Marina Shafir looking for that ankle. And now and Helica risk is about to get all tied up. Marina Shafir smothering risk. She had that left arm trapped in that right angle position, and that's how you tear a rotator cuff, but Risk was smart to get her arm out of there, but she's bringing it down. Helica Risk ducked underneath, and now laying down some right hands on Marina Shafir. Shafir dazed a little bit. No, I spoke too soon. Marina Shafir, the back breaker, and now Helica Risk, the overhook on the arm by Marina Shafir. She's got the body captured and the tap out victory for Marina Shafir. Winner of this match by submission, Marina Shafir. Well, Marina Shafir, no wasted movements, just came in, scored the win, the submission victory. And now let's hear this from Julia Hart of the House of Black. Why is House of Black so evil? Who said anything about being evil? We're just human beings that like a little bit of violence. You know, good people can do bad things, and bad people can do good things. It's all perspective and the mask you hide behind. Just like me, here when I first got in AEW as a cute, innocent little cheerleader. And it wasn't until the House of Black found me, who paved the way of the path of black for me and showed me what violence can do. I'm getting bored explaining myself. So if anyone wants to play, I'll be in the ring. But just remember, the house always wins. Oh, well, we got a one-on-one -on -one battle coming up right now, Excalibur. This man here is big, he's bad, he's nasty. He's part of the trust busters. Mean and nasty. Parker Budo. 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 My French with the X. The following contest Calibre. is set for one fall yes. with a 20 minute time. Introducing first from Winter Garden, Florida, weighing 310 pounds, Trustbusters member Parker Boudreaux. Trustbusters <laughs> member, wow. Yes, he is. He's a Trustbusters <laughs> member. He works on Wall Street. No, no, I'm sure. <laughs> Oh dear, Parker Boudreaux set to compete here tonight on AEW Dark. Let's go back down to Dasha. His opponent, already in the ring, Gus De La Vega. Uh, you know, Gus De La Vega, he's a member of the uh, the Masons. Oh, he lays brick? Yeah, he's a brick layer. All right. Yeah. Uh, guys make a lot of money. Yeah, and he's, uh, he's mood lighting as a wrestler, but Parker Boudreaux takes De La Vega down face first. And Boudreaux not taking off that, that big necklace. That may come back to bite him, remains to be seen, but Boudreaux, big right hand to the midsection. Yeah, big Parker threw that punch and he got all excited after the punch. He's bugging out. Look, look again. Yeah! He gets all fired up. Yeah! Fired up on his own offense. I love oh. it. Oh. Gus De La Vega. <laughs> oh, dive, diving crossbody, but he's going to go down. If Parker Boudreaux has anything to say it, about it, like a ton of bricks, Taz. Because he's a mason, you get it? Oh, jumping knee. <laughs> I do get it. 
But I'll tell you, this big Paulke, he's got some speed and athleticism for a big, huge guy. Oh, look at that, just grinding. Grinding, Parker Boudreaux grinding his wrist into the nose of Gus De La Vega. I like uh, Parker's uh, necklace, it says Parker. <laughs> just like yours, that says Parker as well. Oh, look at that, Boudreaux, one, two, and three. Winner of this match, Parker Boudreaux. Impressive by the Trust Buster member. Parker Boudreau. I've always wondered why you wore that necklace that said Parker on it, but Parker Boudreau, he, he loves violence, just like Julia Hart loves violence, man. Oh! The people have come AEW Fight Forever was revealed to the world. I can't believe what I just saw! And the reaction was nothing short of spectacular. Bring it! Let's see! you remember the feeling when you could just pick up and play a video game? That feeling is back. Are you ready to reignite the magic? AEW Fight Forever has deep career modes. You can create your own wrestler, like me, and use all of my signature moves. Battle it out in some of my favorite matches, like Lights Out. Balls count anywhere. And don't forget about the weapons. All the weapons. Now, it's time for you to create your unforgettable moments. AEW Fight Forever, coming soon. Big Trios match coming up next here on AEW Dark. And Helico teams with Luther and Serpentico, the Chaos Project. The following contest is a trios match set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first from Johannesburg, South Africa, weighing 209 pounds, on Helico. Nobody's got it better than a Helico, man. The guy's living in South Africa. He's got the cool vibe song. He's chilling. People love him. And why is he hanging around with these two knuckleheads that are about to come out here? And his tag team partners, Luther and <laughs> Serpentico, Chaos Project. Tez, that's a great question. I was wondering what brought these three men together, but I, I think I figured it out. I think it's, it's the mononym. It's having only one name. Yes. Angelico, Luther, Serpentico, uh, Taz, you could yes. be a part of this group. Uh, no, but um, I will say I have an idea for these two men, Serpentico and Luther. They should just call themselves Sleuther. <laughs> Their opponents are in the ring, the team of Jay Marti, Jared Diaz, and Richard Adonis. Well, these opponents of Angelico, Luther, and Serpentico both have first and last names, Taz, and so we're gonna have to see how all of that plays out here tonight. Did you say people with one name names, one word names, should be in this chaos project with Angelico is about to start this match. That's what you're saying to me? I'm saying that there's an opportunity there. If that's what brought these three men together, these unlikely uh, this unlikely trio. That's what really brought them together. And I don't know, I'm just wildly speculating here, Tess. I could be completely wrong, yeah. as I am about most things. Yes, no, you are. Yeah, well, anyway, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm still thinking about that. But I know this young man, Diaz, has got to be careful trying to maybe exchange holds with Angelico. Good yeah. luck. Yeah, you see how Angelico, I mean, just he, he knows the simplest, most effective way to inflict the maximum amount of punishment on his opponent. And that makes the tag out to Serpentico. Serpentico's one half of Sleuther. Uh, yes, the, that, that is their, their tabloid name for when, when <laughs> Luther and Serpentico get caught dining in a restaurant in public by the photographers, the paparazzi. They love them. Paparazzi love these cats. Oh, Serpentico just got reversed. 
Oh, Watch out. Instead, the boots out of the corner to the face of Diaz, and Serpentico takes down Diaz. Taz, AEW Dynamite will be making our debut in, oh wait, cover here. Hold on a second. There you go. Uh, Laredo, Where are we going? Where are we debuting? Laredo, Where? Texas. Laredo. The Sames Auto Arena on Wednesday, February 15th. And we'll also be making our debut at the Golden One Center in Sacramento, California on Wednesday, March 8th. And you know where else we're making our debut, Taz? Where? Inexplicably, we're headed to Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada in March. Specifically, Tuesday, March 14th at the Canada Life Center in Winnipeg. Tickets for all three events available right now. And you know what, Taz? They make great holiday gifts. You just stuck them in your sock for the holidays. Just stuff them right in your sock like in Helico, like uh, Luther's stuffing Serpentico's face in this man's stomach. And Luther, Luther, he, oh, wait, the cover there made by Serpentico, Luther, he was screaming at Angelico, who seemed a bit perplexed in the corner. <laughs> he was on the apron. He was, <laughs> what the hell is going on here? What have I got myself and into? And said, no, I'm good. I don't want to come in. I don't want to come in. I'm good. I don't want to come in. Serpentico, oh, gets taken down by Jared Diaz. And now the cover, two, and, oh, just a one count for Diaz. Yeah. Oh, smart of Diaz to go to his corner. He needs to get out of this match. That one of his uh, his buddies in this thing here now looks like Adonis with a under and over. Throwing, he quickly tags out. Made by Jay Marte, but uh, just a one count. Not sure why Adonis went uh, didn't go for the cover there, but I think these three men tagging here tonight for the first time. Still some some kinks to be ironed out, but likewise their opponents. Sir Pentico, Luther, and Angelico team together for the first. Oh, what a thrust kick by Sir Pentico. Sir Pentico's got to get over there and Luther or Angelico to get him in this match. Sir Pentico makes the tag to Luther. Adonis also made the tag and he got taken down by Luther. Luther picking his targets. He's, he's sizing up. Diaz in the Pump kick! Adonis comes charging in. He gets on his own opponent. Oh no! Oh, oh my god! Luther. Luther does that little bit of foot fire, a little chop it up. Gets a little crazy sometimes. Whoa. And, and, and now Serpentico over the top. Tumpy comes here. Oh! And Helico tags in. Takes down Adonis, and Adonis all tied up, and Helico, the Navarro death roll. He's wrenching on the ankles, and Adonis, no choice but to tap. Winners of this match by submission, the team of Chaos Project and Angelico. Wow, Luther celebrating with Angelico <laughs> in the ring. He hoists yeah, him up. Yeah, I feel like I'm watching he picked him up like a, like in uh, Dirty Dance when uh, Patrick Swayze picked up the girl, remember, at the end? Oh, I was thinking they, uh, they're celebrating, Taz, like they won the Super Bowl. Oh, look at this. Look, it's, <laughs> it's like Patrick Swayze again. And Bryce is, uh, uh, what's her name? Yeah. All right, fans, as you know, each and every Wednesday, you hear me on uh, commentary on Dynamite and Rampage. However, however, when you push the SAP button, you hear the Spanish commentary. Ladies and gentlemen, here they are. The Spanish announced position, the commentators you hear, and Helico and Serpentico. But in the ring, in the ring, worlds will collide because in the ring, they will be the Spanish announced project. project! Yes, please, please. SAP, 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 Shivani, you heard it. Now, this is actually fantastic news. Not only can you all enjoy my technical expertise inside the ring, but now you all get to enjoy it verbally and in Spanish. Yeah, coaching. Cada lunes, cada martes, cada miércoles y cada viernes lo que podemos garantizar es 100% acción. ¿Por qué? Porque nosotros somos the S A P. Me cabeza, mala y loca. Sí. 
ASAP. Well, now we know what brought these three men together. Luther, Serpenico, and Angelico, the SAP. Oh, well, here we go, ladies action here on AW Dolph. You know what, Excalibur, we heard from this young lady earlier tonight. Julia Hart, member of the House of Black. Remember what she says, the house always wins. Dad, you're a pro's pro. She said that earlier. The following contest is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Introducing first, honoring the House of Black, Julia Hart. Julia Hart, who earlier she said that the House of Black unlocked something in her, this, this, this love of, of violence, inflicting pain and punishment on her opponents. We saw the Serp section earlier. There's the Julia Hart section. Taz, I mean, really, I mean, it, we, we get all sorts here at uh, AEW Universal. Yes, they cycle in and out, all sorts of people. Julia Hart, very dangerous young lady. House always wins. Remember that. House always wins. Her opponent already in the ring, Sahara Seven. Sahara Seven, chance to make a name for herself here tonight at the expense of Julia Hart. I just want to remind fans that AEW is headed to the Pacific Northwest for the first time ever to kick off the new year Wednesday, January 4th for AEW Dynamite Seattle, Washington at the Pledge, the Climate Pledge Arena, and then the following Friday, Portland, Oregon, the Veterans Memorial Coliseum for Rampage and Battle of the Belts 5. Tickets available right now, AEWTIX.com, Ticketmaster.com, and Tess, they make great holiday gifts. Stuff them in your sock for the holidays. You hang it up, you stuff it. Collar and elbow type avoided by Julia Hart. Thrust kick. Backed up Sahara 7. Julia Hart, very uh, very slow, methodical approach, but Sahara 7, kick to the midsection. Yeah, not rushing into anything, just picking her spots. Nice running back elbow. That'll slow you down right there. Julia Hart, the sledgehammer shots across the back, and Sahara Seven taken down. Julia, was, did she just roll her eyes, Taz? Possibly, possibly. She might have heard your commentary. Put <laughs> the inside on. And now Julia, heartless, locked in. Sahara Seven, no choice but to tap. Winner of this match by submission, Julia Hart. And Mike Posey just trying to get Julia Hart to release the hold. And she scored a very quick, very impressive submission victory here tonight on AEW Dark. But right now, let's go back to our colleague Lexi Nair standing by with Peter Avalon, Cesar Pannoni, and Ryan Nemeth, the wingman. Coming up later tonight, we will see the wingmen's pretty Peter Avalon and the Hollywood hunk Ryan Nemeth in tag team action, then following Cesar Bononi versus Ricky Starks. But guys, I gotta ask, what do the wingmen have planned for 2023? 2023, I'm glad you brought that up. I don't know if you follow the Chinese Zodiac, but I'm a big fan. Do you know what 2023 is the year of? Not the year of the rat, not the year of the chicken, not the year of the monkey. No, no, no. Peter, what is 2023? <laughs> ah, Lexi, I was just vacationing in beautiful, beautiful Mexico City. And according to the Mayan calendar, and hell, according to the Chinese calendar, and according to our Gregorian calendar, it is the year of the wingman. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to forecast? We have a tag team match against who? Who, who cares? cares? It's not the year of them. It's the year of us. Here's a forecast. Tell him, Cesar. 2023, there will be an absolute ass kicking. Wow. Poor Ricky. Well, it sounds like the wingmen have a lot planned for 2023. Stay tuned for more here on Dark. Tag team action coming up next here on AEW Dark. Satnam Singh, seven foot four, one and a billion, and Jeff Jarrett in action next. The following contest.
contest is a tag team match set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first, at a combined weight of 520 pounds, the team of Satnam Singh and Jeff Jarrett. Taz, I mean, a very vocal reaction to Jeff Jarrett here on Soundstage 14 in Orlando, Florida. Jeff Jarrett is hated all over the world for years. He's hated here. They know him here. So uh, he's going to have his, uh, he has an interesting matchup here in this tag match only because you have Jeff Jarrett who has just so much experience. He's been all over the world, succeeded everywhere. Like the man or not, he has succeeded everywhere he's been. He really has. He knows his business. He knows the wrestling industry like the back of his hand. But his tag team partner, He's one in a billion, he's a giant, he's a massive athlete, but he has very minimal experience. So you gotta be Get careful, out. even though you have all this experience, and then you're a tag team partner that does not. Now Jared's gonna talk. I got it next caliber, I'll take care of everything. You know, last month, when I made my debut at Dynamite and cracked Darby Allen, I told the whole world that before I got done with this place, I was gonna need a lot of body bags. Well, tonight at dark, in my debut, I brought some extra body bags with me. Satnam, get them. Oh boy. Oh no. Oh, Sing. <laughs> Sing. Senator Rosario Grillo off the apron out. Dean Alexander in the corner. I don't, oh, Dean though, throwing some right hands. Well, Dean's Sat a strong down. athlete. Dean's a strong athlete, but man, you're giving up so much size. And Dean's a big guy. Look at that. Yeah, Satnam Singh just dwarfs Dean Alexander. Now the tag made out to Jeff Jarrett. And Jarrett coming in with those stomps. Taz, we heard from uh, we heard from the wingman just a, a few minutes ago. And Cesar Bononi promising an ass kicking in our main event. I didn't even know you could say that word. Oh, wait, hold on here. Two. No. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't know what's going on. I don't know. It's going to be crazy. I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, I was going to say, promising it in our main event when Bononi and Ricky Starks go one on one. But right now, Jeff Jarrett with Dean Alexander. Alexander, though, turning things around on Jarrett. And Grillo tagged himself in here, so maybe they can get something going on the veteran. Double J, Jeff Jarrett. Yeah, Jarrett sent into the corner. Grillo dives in with a back elbow. Nobody home, but a big right hand from Jarrett. Yeah, he caught Grillo quick right there on the side. How's he look right there? Ah. Jarrett headed into the ropes. Oh, Grillo he nearly got taken out of his boots. And Taz oh, coming he's up to run away. Nice run away. Yeah, tell me about tomorrow night in San Antonio. Live at 8 7 Central from the Freeman Coliseum in San Antonio, Texas. This AEW Dynamite. We will hear from the American Dragon, Brian Danielson. Death Triangle versus the Elite Match 5 in the Best of Seven series. And it is no disqualification that Death Triangle could close it out tomorrow night. We will also hear the next chapter in the Book of Hobbs. Plus, the AEW Women's World Championship is on the line. Jamie Hayter will take on former champion Hikaru Shida. Plus, we will hear from Absolute Ricky Starks, FTR, and the Guns collide in tag team action. And Keith Lee and Swerve Stricko will be face to face tomorrow night at Dynamite Double Chokeslam from Satnam Singh. Jeff Jarrett, the legal man, he's got Grillo all lined up for the stroke. The cover, two and three. Right there, big double choke slam. Massive by one in a billion. And Jeff Jarrett with the stroke face first, so Grillo. That's it, buddy. A win for Jeff Jarrett and one in a billion, Satnam Singh. Jeff Jarrett, you and I have known each other for a long time. You are now here in AEW, and there is no question you have made your mark. As Max Caster found out this past Wednesday on Dynamite. Oh, Shivani! 
you damn right we go way back. And if there's one thing you know, these morons hadn't changed in 15 years. But Shivani, if there's one thing you know, wherever I go, I'll leave a mark. And Max Caster, you know that all so well, because on Dynamite, you came out with your silly little rap, and I wrapped this guitar around your head. So boys, I've always said, for every action, there's a reaction. What's your reaction gonna be? It's gonna be the same result, because granddaddy ass, Baby boy, boy, Bowens, you're next. There's more where that first guitar came from. So folks, one way or another, I can assure you this. Me, Jay Lethal, Sanjay Dutt, and this man right here. Seven foot five, size 24 shoe. Those boys know exactly what it feels like as they're still laying over there in the pile. Boys, one way or another, the acclaimed, it's gonna be oh so soon that you're gonna be referred to as former AEW Tag Team Champions. And you're looking at one half, one half of the brand new AEW Tag Team Champions. So geriatric slap ass, choke on that. Well, Jeff Jarrett with the acclaimed, the AEW World Tag Team Champions in his sights. Excalibur, I know you love tag team matches, but we got one coming up featuring the wingmen. Ryan Nemeth, Peter Avalon, pretty people out, pretty, pretty, pretty Peter Avalon in action next here. Nemeth and Avalon. Here we go. Popping my peas a little bit. Hey, right the here. sax man's back. Hey. The following contest is a tag team match set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first, accompanied by Cesar Bononi, the team of Pretty Peter Avalon and the Hollywood Hunk, Ryan Nemeth, the Wingman. You know, I use the Wingman music, this song you hear, the song in my cigar shack. I listen to you know, my luxury cigar room at my home, and I play this on a loop. Scatting on the, you know, I just love it. This real fun. Even, even if you're not in, in in the cigar shack, just like like you are right now. I mean, of course we're here in Orlando, but the, the, this music is still playing in the cigar shack. Oh, it's on a constant loop. You're right. When I say constant loop, I mean constant, like 24/7. No matter where I am in the world, it's playing. And uh, we have pitches. Uh, we're gonna hang pitches of Avalon up there. Uh, the other guys. Hey, <laughs> the, the other guy. <laughs> Their opponents already in the ring, the team of Sage Scott and Jake St. Patrick. Ba -ba 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 sorry, sorry. Guy. Patrick <laughs> set the square off against Ryan Nemeth and pretty Peter Avalon here. Tag team action. And Taz, before this match gets too far underway, Want to let fans know that on Wednesday, January 18th, AEW is making our debut in Fresno, California at the Save Mart Center. And then one week later in Lexington, Kentucky, on Wednesday, January 5th, in the historic Rupp Arena. And on February 22nd, also Wednesday, we'll be making our debut in Phoenix, Arizona at the Footprint Center. Tickets for all three events available right now. AEWTIX.com and Taz, you're never going to guess it. They make great holiday gifts. I can't do it. I, you're killing the gimmick. Nice mount return I by Nemeth. Stuck him in a sock. I mean, what to say? He's scoring points up to right, Nemeth. <laughs> well, Taz, if, if only people knew that on literally every single piece of promo copy I'm given to read, it says tickets go on sale on this date or are available right now, and they make great holiday gifts on literally every single one of them. <laughs> Tag Avalon was on the other side of him. I don't even think Avalon tagged in. Did he tag in? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Remsburg. <laughs> I'm going to text him after this match. Oh, the cover made by Avalon. Now yeah, the kick out. Remsburg loves when I text him. He loves when I text him. <laughs> it's true. All the time I yeah. text him. I text him all the time. 
Jake St. Patrick, oh, uh, elevates up and over, lands on his feet, that kick to the legs of Avalon. Avalon sweeps out the leg. Oh, elbow for St. Scott in the corner, and St. Patrick taken down by pretty Peter Avalon. Cover made, one, two. I mean, you know, the, uh, you know, pretty Peter Avalon, he actually is a very handsome man. I mean, he kind of looks like a, a younger, like, roughed up Burt Reynolds in the 70s. Like if Burt was on a, you know, at the, at the bar for like a full weekend and then went out to, uh, hold on a second here. Over here. Went, in, went out to the, the hills, was hanging out and drinking moonshine. And then maybe was like hanging around a bunch of marijuana plants. <laughs> then they would have that similar look. Well, is it because of the, the new beard, the new facial hair that I think really, really frames his face well, pretty Peter Avalon? Who's he? Oh, Avalon? Oh, yeah, yeah, it does. You're right. I think it is. It reminds me of Burt um, Reynolds, that is. <laughs> Big Burt Reynolds fan, yeah. <laughs> I, I thought you meant Burt, the. Uh, the baritone saxophonist <laughs> that uh, doesn't get a lot of work from the wingmen's band. No, St. Ryan, not a wingman, they're getting bounced around here. Yeah, St. Scott, belly to belly, suplex. Takes Ryan Nemeth over that top, far leg hooked, but Avalon there to break it up. Good job of Avalon to stop that. Any kind of momentum, shutting them down here. Yeah, Avalon, rain it down oh. right hands, St. Patrick. Caught the Manhattan drop and then a boot to the face. And now St. Scott charges in. Thrust kick, that one caught. Scott right on the nose. And now a hunk of love from the Hollywood hunk. He covers two and three. Winners of this match, the Wingman. Taz, I feel like I've, I've seen that, that neck breaker somewhere before, but it makes sense because well, Brian Nemeth, you know, he loves stealing things. Yeah, oh, Nemeth's a, a kleptomaniac. Uh, he's, uh, he goes through people's bags. Uh, yeah, we went successful in this uh, victorious win. Singles action coming up next here on AEW Dark. Kip Sabian with Penelope Ford in his corner in action next. The following contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first from Gorleston, Norfolk, England, weighing 193 pounds, accompanied by Penelope Ford. Super bad, Kip Sabian. There he is, Kip Sabian. Kip Sabian. Set to compete one on one here tonight against Caleb Connolly. Let's go back down to Tasha Gonzalez. His opponents are in the ring. Caleb Connolly. Penelope Ford in the corner of Kip Sabian. Oh, Kip starting things out. Boot to that midsection, just snatches that side headlock. Connolly, though, he's a vet, he's experienced. Not to be taken lightly, but Kip Sabian. Kip Sabian. Cover here. I was gonna Let's say, Taz, seems like Kip has uh, read the scouting report. He's, he's getting out of the gates hot early here. Yeah, 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 that's smart to do, especially with someone that is a veteran. You can't look past somebody like that. By Caleb. Oh, roll up here. Two. No, but uh, boot to the midsection again. Kip finding success with those kicks. And now, Caleb, though, trips out the leg of Kip Sabian, and now Caleb Conley with Tornillo over the top of the slingshot. But just a two count on Kip Sabian. That was well done. That was well done right there. Well done right there for sure. And you see Penelope on the outside is getting a little bit upset. Oh, big elbow strike by Caleb Conley. He blocks Kip's, and he comes back with a left hand of his own, or left elbows now. Look at this, just battering. Kip Sabian is Caleb Conley. What's that? Good striker is Caleb's good striker for sure. Definitely. Oh, he got outsmarted got that one. Found his target. Now the uppercut from Caleb Conley. Rolling elbow strike. And now the shoulder is captured into the suplex. The cover, too. Excuse me, not the cover, the bridge. Caleb Conley very nearly stole one right there. 
Penelope on the outside seems a tad concerned. I don't blame her. And Taz, on Wednesday, February 1st, AEW will be making our debut in Dayton, Ohio at the Nutter Center. And then a week later, El Paso, Texas at the El Paso County Coliseum on Wednesday, February 8th. And Revolution, the pay-per-view event, takes place at San Francisco's Chase Center on Sunday, March 5th. Tickets available right now, AEWTAX.com. And they make great holiday gifts, Kip Sabian. What a springboard moonsault, excuse me, what, what a moonsault to the outside. Yeah, and smart to get his opponent in the ring here. Can he finish this off? Maybe some sort of a springboard or something. There's the drop kick. Knocks Caleb Conley all the way across the ring to the opposite corner. Kip Sabian. Now. Oh, he called it. I don't have to say anything. There's the cannonball. The cover. Oh, well, not the cover. Excuse me. He's Bring, brings Caleb up to a vertical position. Twisting neck breaker, Kip covers, and gets the win. Winner of this match, Kip Sabian. Well, Kip Sabian, the cannonball in the corner, setting up the victory. And Kip continues a hot streak, but he has his eyes still locked on. Freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy and the AEW All-Atlantic Championship. Here we go, big match right here on Dog Jay Cargill in a TBS Eliminator matchup coming up right now. Jay Cargill, the TBS champion, next Calvin, this should be good. A storm <laughs> is coming. The following contest that Braun is a TBS Championship Eliminator match. An interesting group accompanied by the Batty from Fear Beach, Florida. She is the TBS Champion, Jay Cargill. Jay Cargill has been completely dominant as the TBS champion remains undefeated in her professional wrestling career. And this is gonna be a big test for her opponent, but it is a TBS championship eliminator match. Her opponent already in the ring, Dream Girl Ellie. We know Dream Girl Ellie. She, I mean, I'm not even saying, <laughs> we know her, we've had her here. On dog, I'm just, I can't, man, I can't do it. <laughs> well, Dream Girl Ellie, the, the Eliminator match concept, if Dream Girl Ellie wins here tonight against Jade Cargill, she will receive a shot at the TBS Championship, but she's got to, I mean, seemingly do the impossible. She has to defeat Jade Cargill, hand Jade her first loss of her professional career, Taz. Well, you'd have to be dreaming if that's going to happen, but... Who better than Dream Girl Ellie? Almost got knocked down by Goozle. Bitten Goozle on a choke slam almost. Well, choke uh, Goozle, not slam. Take the slam part out. Fix it in post. Uppercut in the corner, then the sledgehammer across the shoulder blades. Jade Cargill not, not making many friends here at AEW Universal, but. Oh, Dream Girl Ellie tried for the crossbody. Jade, no hands with the catch, the hallway slam. And Jade Cargill up to her feet. Now, Jade, line in wait. Ellie is up. The pump kick lands. And this could be the beginning of the end. Dream Girl Ellie brought up. Oh, Jaded. Dream Girl Ellie. Two, three. Dream Girl Ellie land on her belly. Winner of this match, the TBS champion, Jay Cargill. 44 and oh, there you see the record. Jade Cargill still undefeated. I mean, it is gonna take an army to defeat Jade Cargill, get that, to, to get that TBS championship away from this woman. Just absolutely dominant, Taz. 
Very impressive. She always is. Jade always is. So she's going to be tough to topple for that TBS title. Main event time here on AEW Dark. Cesar Bononi promising ass kicking here in our main event, but he's gonna have to contend with absolute Ricky Starks. The following contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first, accompanied by the wingman from Sao Paulo, Brazil, weighing 259 pounds. Cesar Bonani! Taz, little known fact that the guy, George, the guy that plays the alto sax on uh, the Wingman theme, is also the guy that is playing this, this driving guitar in Cesar Bononi's theme. Yeah, and, and actually, the guy on the bass is his cousin, Floyd. No relation to the baseball bat that the Sherpa. And his opponent. From New Orleans, Louisiana, weighing 210 pounds, absolute Ricky Starks. This past Wednesday night on Dynamite, Ricky Starks, he had a, a hell of an effort against MJF for not only the Dynamite Diamond Ring, but the AEW World Championship of MJF. The low blow ended the night for Ricky Starks, a low blow behind the referee's back. That's got to be, it's got to be heartbreaking for Ricky. Yeah, no, yeah, I talked to Ricky a little bit about it after the match. He was, he was definitely ticked off about it, but, you know, sometimes that's how MJF rolls. I mean, he is the World Heavyweight Champion, and Ricky, you know, not only just comes into this match or any match as of late, especially with a lot of momentum. I mean, just coming off of uh, get an opportunity that you earn for the World Heavyweight Championship on worldwide TV on Dynamite and having the outing that Ricky had was very impressive. So uh, I'm sure there's a lot of good good things in the near future for Ricky Starks here in AEW. Yeah, it seems like, uh, I mean, with a, an athlete like Ricky Starks, just a, a bump in the road, not a complete detour. It happens, you know what I mean? You know how it is, it happens. I mean, sometimes in... You know, yeah, did, did MJF cheat? Absolutely, you know, but, you know, uh, you know, he got away with it, and that's kind of what MJF does. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of what he does, and it's, like it or not, it's what's got him to where he is right now, and, and Starks knows that. Starks not the type to complain about. Well, Cesar Pannoni positioning Ricky Starks in the corner. A series of boots and right hands. Getting admonished by referee Paul Turner. Oh, Bononi went for the high boot in the corner. Ricky Starks up on the shoulder of Cesar Bononi. And the snake eyes him. Oh, no, maybe not. Bononi sent hard into the corner. Ricky Starks launches off the rope. DDT. Took the big man off his feet right there. Ricky Starks with the advantage. He's feeling, oh, wait, look, look at Ryan Nemeth. Nemeth grabbing the boot, and now, now Avalon grabbing the boot. I think Nemeth was trying to steal his boot. And, oh! Bononi! Uh oh! Whoa, well, watch out! Wild swing! The spear lands from Ricky Starks! The cover, two, three! Winner of this match, absolute Ricky Starks! Well, what a return to form! for absolute Ricky Starks here tonight, making short work of the opposition test. That's how you bounce back from a heartbreaking loss. Absolutely, pun intended, absolutely. Absolute Ricky Starks. Got Mike in hand. Oh, you're on Snapchat, huh? Nice. There we go. Perfect. Hey, listen. Obviously, last Wednesday. Thank you. Obviously, last Wednesday didn't go as planned, but hey, I got a lot on my mind that I'd like to share with all of you. And I'm going to do that tomorrow night on Dynamite. Exactly where I belong, live and in a ring in front of everybody in San Antonio. 
And there's one thing that you can expect from me. What I got to say is going to be absolutely great. Why? Because I'm absolute Ricky Starks, baby! Not only will we hear from Ricky Starks tomorrow night on Dynamite, the AEW Women's World Championship match, Jamie Hayter and Hikaru Shida, plus match five in the best of seven series, Death Triangle and the Elite, no disqualification! Tomorrow on TBS. Whoa! The American Dragon! It's the AEW Dynamite Holiday Bash. Hater hits. Hot. Women's world champion Jamie Hayter defends against Sheeta. After weeks of taunting, the guns take on FTR. And it's all on the line for the elite in match five against the Death Triangle. How about we not only make hammers legal, we make all weapons legal. AW Dynamite Holiday Bash, tomorrow at 8 on TBS.